Hello. Welcome to Grade 4 Maths, Term 1. I'm your teacher, Mr. Darren, who many of you may know already. If you've been taught by me, then obviously you know me. A lot of you were in my homeroom in Grade 2. And you will have obviously seen me around the school last year as well, if you weren't being taught by me. And I will be your maths teacher this school year. So, we have here, chapter number one, will be numbers to 10,000. So, last year I know you did up to 1,000. Now we're going all the way up to 10,000. Then chapter two will be more about numbers. Then chapter three, shapes and solids. Same as last year, but we'll add a few more shapes and solids in, make it a little bit more difficult. Then addition and subtraction, similar again, bigger numbers. Multiplication and division, you should be getting quite good at now. We'll do some, deal with some larger numbers there as well, and some position and movement to round off the first term. Then we'll have brand new chapters for term two. Okay. Little quote here that says, be the best you. So be the best you that you can be. So when you get up in the morning, when you're ready to study, go and have a look in the mirror and make the decision to be the best that you can be for the day. Okay. So these are rules for online learning. Um, I will go through these live, but a quick reminder if you are watching the video, to wear headphones if you have them, it really helps so we don't get as much background noise. And mute your mic when you are not speaking. You don't want everyone talking at once. Similar to when you are in a real classroom. If everyone talks at the same time, we can't hear what anyone is saying. And if you have a question, of course, raise your hand on camera or press the raise hand button like you can see down here and be polite and be respectful to your teachers and to the other students and to your family and whoever else is in your home okay you should be familiar by um, by now with this book it's the same as the previous books it's got a slightly different cover it's now called top maths instead of smart maths but the inside is very similar to how it was before you will get this bit, which is called a chapter opener. It introduces the topic in a stimulating way with prompt questions provided to encourage active discussion. So this we'll have a talk about in our first lesson. And this green area here tells you what you will be learning in each chapter. So you should be familiar with these from the years before, but I'll just go through them quickly again. Um, and then you get a do you remember box, which will refer to the book from the previous year. So it will refer to some information from grade three, which you did last year. And it will ask you, do you remember doing this? And it gives you a quick reminder of what you did last year in this subject. Then we have um, material and pictorials tutorials which are basically just pictures and demonstrate what is happening on this page um, it helps you see what is happening in a visual way uh, what else have we got here try this boxes which get you to try something before you go on to the on your own down here which give you more questions about the topic you are doing at the time you can try your best to do yourself and we also have hands-on maths, which are activities, which will be included within each chapter. Now we'll try and add some extra activities online and when we're in school in person as well. To make the classes a bit more interesting and when you do activities, it does help you to remember things you were studying as well. And apply what you know. There's some more challenging questions that are always at the end of each chapter. It'll be the same for this book and we will go through them the best we can together to help each other out. So, these are the chapters in the contents in the start of your book. I've read through them already, but I'll read them quickly. Numbers to 10,000, then more about numbers, 
Shapes and solids, addition and subtraction, multiplication and division, and position and movement. Which we will work through and finish before the end of term one. And hopefully at some point during that time we will be back in school in person and not online still. So, this is the chapter opener, chapter number one, numbers to 10,000. Quite a few things to see on this page. We have a world map here. And we have a mountain here called Mount Everest, which is the highest mountain in the entire world. It tells you how high it is there, 8,848 meters. What else have we got? We've got a table here with tools for mountain climbers on. Uh, there's a tent and there's a few children standing on the floor here. Okay. And our first question this year is, are there any mountains in your country? So your country being Thailand. So this is something you can look up yourself. So have a look, are the mountains in your country? And then see if you can find out which the highest mountain is and how many meters high that mountain is as well. And then when you've done that, write it in your notebook. Do you know how tall the mountains are? So same question I just asked you to do. See if you can look up how tall those mountains are and write it in your notebook. Just two learning objectives for this chapter. I will learn to count, read and write numbers up to 10,000. And number two, know the value of each digit in a four digit number. So just two learning objectives to go through in this chapter. This chapter is relatively short, so what we're going to try to do is go through it in three lessons. So, one on Friday will be the first lesson of online learning, then two the week after. And as always, in maths, like every other subject, we have some spelling tests. So, this will be set, this lesson, and next lesson we will do the test. Um, we'll do it live, but if you are not there live, I will read out the words in the next video and you can do the test that way. So our eight words for this test are units, ends, hundreds, thousands, place, value, numerals, and counting. So, here we have numbers to 10,000 and the first box is do you remember doing this in grade 3 with Mr. J so each section of this cube here has 100 cubes in it the so 100 smaller cubes in it so there are 10 along and 10 to the back and we know of course 10 times 10 is 100 because whenever you time something by 10, you just add a zero to the end. So 10 times 10 equals, not just 10, add the zero and you get 100. So each one of these has 100 cubes in. And then we have the whole cube. So if that one contains 100, and then there are 10 more of those sections, all we've got to do here, times it by 10 again. So the answer isn't 100, we just add one more zero because we multiplied by 10. So in total, in this big cube, there will be a thousand little cubes. One thousand little cubes. That should be something you've done last year. Of course, this year we will be building all the way up to 10,000, so we might have an even bigger cube. How many pens are there? So here you have a pack of 1,000 pens. That must be a big pack of pens. Then two packs of 100, three packs of 10, and one or five separate individual pens. So first I count the thousands. Next I count the hundreds. Then I count the tens. Finally I count the units. 
there are 1,245 pens, also spelt out in writing as you see here. Okay. On this page, how many cubes are there again? So we identified before that each one of these large cubes has a thousand little cubes in it. And each cross section has 100 in it. So you know you've got 1,000, 2,000, 1, 2, 300, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. For a total of 2,306 cubes. Can you count the cubes below by counting on in thousands? So it's like almost like as easy as counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But each time you say one of those numbers, you have to say thousand in between. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000. 8,000, 9,000, and 10,000. There are 10,000 small cubes, and 10,000 is written as 10,000 in words. And how many hundreds are there in 10,000? Or in 10,000? How would you work that out? Let's have a think. Do we want to know? So, what you want to do here is. 10,000, that's a zero there, even though it doesn't look like one, divided by 100 equals how many? So we want to know how many times 100 fits into 10,000. So we can break this down a little bit. How many times does 100 go into 10 or 1,000? We could go 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. 10 times. So there are 10 100s in each 1,000. And we know there are 10,000s in each 10,000. So all we've got to do here, do 10 times 10. We already know equals 100. So there are 100 um, hundreds in each 10,000. We can check that back by doing the multiplication. 100 times 100 equals. It doesn't equal 100, does it? So when you multiply by 100, you add two zeros to the end. So when we multiply by 10, we added one zero. When multiplying by 100, you just add two zeros to the end. There you go. And that would be 10,000. Another way you could have done it is when dividing by 100, all you do, take two zeros away. It's the opposite way. So for division, you take zeros away. And for multiplication, you add zeros on. This is only if you're multiplying by multiples of 10, such as 10, 100, and 1,000. But that's the way the base 10 number system works. Okay, so the answer to that question was, how many hundreds are there in 10,000? There are 100. Okay, next page, we have a try this box. Count the cubes, write the number in numerals and in words. So, how many cubes are there in numerals? Let's see. So we know that's a thousand there. Let's write this over here. So I've got one thousand. And then I've got some sets of a hundred here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I've got eight hundreds. Then I've got three tens. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six units. So in total I have, I can fit it in this tiny little box here, 1,836. There we go. 
Uh, and in words. Okay, I'll try my best to write it with the mouse here. So I have... 1,000. Hopefully you'll be able to write much more neat and tidy than me with your pencils. 1,000. That's T-H-O-U-S-A-N-D. And 800. E-I-G-H-T. One thousand eight hundred and thirty six. S I N. There we go. One thousand eight hundred and thirty six. Okay. Next we have an on your own box. Let's see what we've got here. How many are there? Write the number in numerals and in words. So, I suggest you should pause the video here, then try and do these yourself. And then, when you've completed it, unpause, then you can have a look at the solution. Okay, so we have three boxes of 1,000 and three pens. It's simply 1,003. Remember here, you have zero hundreds and zero tens, so you've got to write the zeros in. Don't forget the zeros. 1,003. My three's a little bit big there. It should be smaller. And we write that one. O-N-E. 1,000. 1,000. And... T H R E E. And now we have one, two, three, four, four thousands. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six hundreds. One. And then one, two, three, four tens. And we have zero units. Don't forget to write the units, otherwise your number will not be correct. You've got to write the zero at the end. If you didn't write the zero, your number would read as 464. Now I've put the zero in, the number reads as 4,640. I will attempt to write on the page here. F-O-U-R, thousand. Six hundred and forty. F O R T Y. Okay, so that should be your solution for those questions. Make sure it's much more neat and tidy than Mr. Darren's writing with his mouse, though. Okay, so next we have. Question two, three, and four. For these, um, pause the video again and attempt them yourself before you have a look at the solutions. So hopefully you've got them now and you've unpaused. So here we have 4,200, oh sorry, 4,502. So I see they're all 4,000, so I have to look at the hundreds and 500. Okay, two of them are 500, so it's either this or this one. And two. Oh, so this has got 20 at the end, this has got two. So it must be this one. 4,052. This one has 52 at the end, so it must be this one. And the only one left that has 20 at the end is the one up here. That's the process of elimination. They all had 4,000. Then we had to check the hundreds and the tens and the ones to see which one was which. Write these numbers in numerals. 3,159. 3,159. 1,036. 1,000. No hundreds here, but we still need a zero. 
Remember that zero, otherwise the number will be wrong. 1,036. Then 6,427. 6,427. And finally, 9,717. 9,717. Next, write these numbers in words. Okay, so we're gonna have 1,000. And then 500. And 13. There we go. Okay, next we've got 2,255. Wow, thousand two thousand two hundred. Hopefully, your writing is much tidier than mine. Hundred uh, and fifty five, if I can fit it in. A and D. 50, oh, just about fit it in here, 55, there we go, then 7,306, what I'm going to do, I'll write this over here, running out of space, so, 7,000, and then, what else have we got, 306, no tens this time. Three hundred and yeah. And last one is just eight thousand and ninety. E I G H T thousand. There we go. So that should be all the answers for that page. So then for your workbook for this lesson, I want you to complete pages one to four, then take photographs of them and upload them on the Google Classroom. And that's the end of today's lesson. Um, there is a workbook guide on the my IBS YouTube channel. If you are struggling with any of the questions in the workbook, it gives you some tips on that. So goodbye for now and see you for the next lesson.